It's coffee time. I love putting honey in my coffee. I don't do it super often, but when I do, it's just like, I don't know what I love so much about it because honey is like, to me at least, it's this interesting sweet and savory combination because it has that kind of earthy richness to it, but it's also very sweet. And depending on what type of honey, obviously it's different. Like clover honey is a little bit more, has a little bit more of that umaminess to it. But I love putting honey in my coffee because it makes it like just a little bit thicker. And I don't know, I feel like there are different, I feel like there are different undertones in the coffee that wind up getting brought out. It's not just like you just taste honey. You don't really taste honey in there. It's just this kind of darkish sweetness. I don't know. Guys, look, just listen. Honey and coffee is great. <laughs> I am currently trying to catch up on Game of Thrones. I just finished episode five. I know I was really behind. So the episode that just showed that everybody is vaguely freaking out about um, was episode nine. So I have four left. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, I have four left to watch. And I'll be all caught up and ready for the finale. And it's going to be a thing. <laughs> it's going to be a big old thing. Man, everybody's been tripping balls about that show. So I can't, can't wait. I can't wait. I was so good last, last season. I was so good about going to Warp Zone every week, watching it. And staying caught up and watch the whole season with them. And the first season of Game of Thrones, I didn't even try to watch it until it was already done. Because I didn't even hear about it at first. And then I had all these friends that were like, oh my god, Game of Thrones is like the best show ever. So I finally wound up just watching all of season one. And I was like, what? And then wound up watching season two of the Warp Zone, right? So now, I'm just like, mm. Trying to catch up so that I know all the deets. And dumb Jesse, dumb Jesse knows all the things because he read the books. Whatever. Whatever, dumb Jesse. I don't even care. I don't even care about you and your feelings. So there. So there. <laughs> what else did we do today? We did the podcast. If you watched that, you know that that was very exciting. <laughs> and uh, let's see, this morning. I, we were going to go to the gym and then wound up not doing that. So that's, that's kind of a, a dead end story. <laughs> I always hate it though, because I wind up going, okay, even though we didn't go at our normally appointed time, I'm still going to exercise on my own, right? Because we've been doing good about doing just like a little bit of exercise every day at least. So today I was like, no, it's fine. I'll do the podcast. And then right after the podcast, I'll totally exercise. So the podcast finishes. I was like, God, I feel like I need a shower now. So <laughs> I went and took a shower. And then when I got out of the shower, I went, well, now, I, now I'm all clean. Why did I do that? <laughs> why, didn't I, why didn't I exercise and then wash myself? Dummy. Dumb, 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 dumb self. But what can you do? And Chris is home. Chris was gone for a few days in San Francisco. And he said, apparently... There's a thing in LA that everybody keeps saying that I think is just like silly. But again, LA has very temperate weather. It's pretty much in the Fahrenheit, 70s and 80s all year long. So they have what's called June gloom. I had never heard this term before until this year. I remember I've been here for like, I guess this won't be my third summer. This will be my second summer here, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Wait, let's figure this out. I got here fall 2010. So summer 2011, summer 2012. No, this will be summer number three here. So I have never heard this, this June gloom thing before. And I finally asked somebody to explain it because it had been thrown around a whole bunch in a conversation last night. And... My friend was like, yeah, haven't you noticed that in June, there's always days that are very gloomy, where it's very overcast. Now, I want you to understand. When they say overcast, they mean the sun's mostly out, but every now and then it gets dark. Literally, 
today was like the gloomiest day that we've had so far. And it was, oh, it's, you know, it's like pretty overcast and dark. And then you stand outside for five minutes and suddenly the sun's out. It's like, this doesn't count. This isn't, if this is what June gloom is, this does not count. This is not gloomy. This is fake gloomy. <laughs> this is silly. This is a silly thing that everybody's trying to turn into a thing. I just realized I have a great story for you. So last night I went over to my friend's house because he was going to be hopping a plane for Israel. And so we were like, oh, we should all hang out and, and do a goodbye thing. So I went over there and, uh, and he had, <laughs> these are the sort of friends I have. This is Jared, my friend that I cook with often. If you follow me on Twitter, you have seen many, many pictures of food with him. So <laughs> he and I just both really love to cook, so we're cooking buddies. So anyway, he, one time when I came over, he was sitting in a chair in the front yard, smoking a cigarette, and waiting for snails to show up. He had put out snail bait, and I was like, what you doing? And he was like, catching snails. I was like, all right. So then later he goes, I caught a bunch of snails, and now I'm going through the process of like of starving them and then feeding them cornmeal and then starving them again and like do, doing all the stuff to make sure that all the toxins are out so that we can eat them. And at first I was like, this sounds like a terrible idea. And then I thought, you know what? I know the type of brain that you have and I'm sure that you have done all of your research. So yeah, if you wind up cooking these snails that you caught in your backyard, I'll eat them, sure. So he has spent so many days on these snails, you guys. So many days because the process of making sure that that they're like cleansed basically, that like their insides are all clean, it is a big old process. So it was just so many days. I can't even remember how many, like 15-ish, I think. And finally he was like, okay, so the last part of the process to make sure that all of the parasites and things are gone is to boil them. I said, okay. So I came over and he was like, all right, so it looks like it might take three hours of boiling. And I said, all right, <laughs> this whole process, I'd be like, okay, I'll eat them. I'm just letting you do your thing. So he goes, yeah, I didn't think it was gonna, I didn't think it was gonna take that long to boil these, but you know what? We're just gonna go with it. And I was like, all right, let's do it. So he tosses them in water with like garlic and a bunch of herbs and it smells amazing. And it's just boiling for a while, right? We're keeping an eye on the water, like, et cetera, et cetera. So then we all go outside. We started a fire. We're all chatting, blah, blah, blah. I go inside to get a drink and I sniff the air and I think it smells like chicken hearts in here. I don't know how many of you have had chicken hearts, but they're delicious. Anyway, go inside and I go, hmm, it smells like chicken hearts. That's not right. <laughs> and then I go to the stove and the snails that again, he had spent 15 plus days on. These snails were completely charred to the bottom of the pot because we had gone outside and forgotten to keep watch on the water. <laughs> and so I go outside and I was like, Jared, they're burning. And he was like, what? And like ran inside and looked at them, looked at me, looked at them, and then goes, this might be for the best. <laughs> and I said, mm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> he was like, you know, maybe, maybe trying to eat something potentially toxic wasn't a great idea right before I'm supposed to get on a plane to go to Israel. I was like, yeah, maybe, you know, I, I would have eaten them with you. We would have died together if there was a problem, but you know, it was, it was good. It was, it was funny after the fact. And at the time it was just very sad because I was like, oh, you've spent so much time on these. You spent so much time on these. You poor, you poor, poor button. I feel so bad for him. But in the end, the kitchen smelled amazing. Cause again, chicken hearts, chicken hearts used to be one of those things that I wanted my mom to make all the time. And obviously she wasn't going to make chicken hearts every night, but I, I wanted them. <laughs> and then the one time, only one time in my life have I tried to make them on my own and I ruined them and I need to try it again so that I feel a little bit better about myself because 
Guys, chicken hearts are just so good. I know not all of you eat meat. I didn't eat meat for a while. But chicken hearts are really good. I'm going to be honest with you. They're real good. Yes. I'm trying to think. If there's anything else. It's kind of hard to top that story, honestly. That story was a good, it was a good one. <laughs> just like, normally... When we go on these food adventures, it turns out amazing. <laughs> this is like the one time that took so much time and effort. Like, he caught these snails. Guys, he caught these snails out of his backyard. Hilarious. <laughs> He's one of those people that I'm glad I have in my life. So that I can tell you guys these sorts of stories and be like, and one day we'll do a coffee time with Jared and I'll be like, this is Jared. And you'll all go, ah, and you'll all suddenly, it'll click and go, that makes so much sense. And I'll be like, right? Oh, <laughs> wonderful. So yeah, today was just podcast and then, uh, made news and Chris came home. And so we all got celebratory froyo. And now I'm catching up on Game of Thrones, and it's great so far. Oh my gosh, I'm just so happy. I want, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go watch more. I need to catch up as soon as possible because I, I don't know how much longer I can avoid spoilers because there's gonna reach a point where everybody's like, you know what, if you haven't seen it by now, then, then screw you. I'll be like, no, I gotta, no. I'll be so sad. So I'm just gonna go do that. And I hope that you guys had an amazing day. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.